You're tuned in to Capital Jazz TV. I'm your host, Jodine Dorsey, and she's no stranger to Capital Jazz. We've we've had her before here with this family. Welcome, Corinne Bailey Ray. Hi, Corinne. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. It's always a delight for you to be here. We love seeing you perform. How's the cruise been going for you so far? It's been amazing. This is the first cruise that I've ever been on, and um, we joined the cruise at St. Martin. I have family mm -hmm. in St. Kitts. Oh, so um, I went to go and see my dad's side of the family. He was born in St. Kitts. And then we flew in a propeller plane, which if I've done that, I don't remember doing it. I don't know if I just sort of <laughs> blocked it out, but I went onto the air strip and there it was. And so there was, it was about yeah. us and, you know, eight other people. And it's so small. Like it's those, so and small. And you hear everything. Oh, you hear the propellers, but I don't know. It's weird. It, the, sh the flight was only 25 minutes, but it was sort of reassuring. It's like, <laughs> I can see the propellers whizzing around. I can hear the deafening sound. Like, and the boat, the thing's so light. I just mm -hmm. felt like, yeah, it kind of made sense for a flying experience. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can see the pilots and the th moving the throttle forwards and backwards. Those, and it just, it's so scary the to pedals, me. pedals, yeah. It's so scary yeah. to me. It was, it was short, but it was a good experience. Yeah. So and then, yeah, we came in St. Martin and then we've just been here for a few days now. And what I love is that Corinne is taking advantage of this moment. Like, the <laughs> family is here. Yeah. You guys, have you been able to relax? Have you been able to do oh, anything? Oh, yeah. We've relaxed tons. I mean, we we're eating about five meals a day. <laughs> right. I don't know how anybody does it. And we've talked to the new people on the crew. And yeah. my kids are in the swimming pool. We went to dance class. Yes. We saw some great performers last night from um, Phil and Dance Co. Yeah. So, yeah, that was really good. The, we, we were actually at the Phil and Dangle dance class together. I don't know about you, but I left there and I was like looking for my abs because yeah. I just felt like... <laughs> it was the squats and you did the squats. You're like, yeah, yeah I, I remember I these this, from right. when I was, a, you know, played ho field hockey as a teenager. But then she was like, oh, now we're going to stay down here for 10 counts. And I was just thinking, gosh, I'm really going to feel this on stage tonight. <laughs> just thinking, is this sensible to do? But yeah, we, we had a great time. They Good. were like 20 years old and just Good. so full of life. And um, they yeah. did a great program last night. They did. They did. Your your family is so important. I see it. I see I see you with your daughter. Your daughter was in the class with you. Is she singing yet? I mean, is she is I she mean, like both of them sing loads. I mean, I think everyone is a singer. You know, I yeah. think everyone has that in their heart. I really feel that about art and mm -hmm. music you know they're things that we are made to feel we have to um, mm. excel at in a particular way you know mm -hmm. singing or oh, it has to be really in tune or it has to be high or dance you have to be really flexible or but these things are sort of open to all of us and you mm. know if, you, if you've raised children you know they they dance before they can walk and yeah. they sing before they can talk so yeah. I'm a big believer in sort of that art and music and all of those things are for everyone and so yeah there's mm. that's carrying on doing it yeah now, did your parents also kind of get you, when you said you wanted to start singing, supportive and just feeding yeah. into your talents? I mean, I feel like the best way they supported was sort of encouraging us, but mm -hmm. they really just let us all find our own things. Got and it. I mean, I guess, I think my mum took me to ballet because I used to f um, trip over all the time. She'd say, <laughs> oh, you trip over a piece of cotton. So I went I'm to ballet. As well. I'm clumsy yeah, as well. So it's, it's really useful, but I think, yeah. you know, I didn't carry on doing it. I did it until I was maybe 12 or something, but just the thing of having the confidence and knowing your body and yeah. how you move into a room and feeling like mm -hmm. the thing of performing, you know, you, yeah. there's a one point where you don't know the steps and then you learn it and then you perfect it and then you do it on the night, you're nervous and the second yeah. night you're not. And I just think that kind of thing is really good for kids. Even if you go into engineering or welding or medicine it's or so important whatever it is after that you yeah know? yeah i am yeah. a true believer in the art still being part of engineering or if you get yeah. into the technical field or yeah. science field i think a, you, the way that, that you move your body in space creates such a huge impression you know you think mm -hmm. of walking into a board true. meeting walking mm -hmm. into um a room full of people walking into a party they're all they're all a first impression, right. they're all a moment. So That's an right. interview, they're all the things. That's yeah. right. That's right. So it's been some years since you've been with us on Capital Jazz. The pandemic hit us hard. Man, the live event space, artists, musicians, everyone was impacted with the pandemic. How did you get through that part outside of having a beautiful family how did you get through um I, th I think it was really difficult i mean i think it was difficult personally because we had you know we just had our second child and <gasps> you know you you want to share things like that with the world yeah. and you want to have that thing as a a parent in the early days of 
just sitting in different people's houses and yeah. having cups of tea and talk about how tired you are. <laughs> that's like a big, that's one of the big, <laughs> that's a big thing. There's a big plus of being a parent <laughs> in there. Yeah, so we were just, it was hard to not be able to do that, right. you know, sort of put your burden down with people and not be able to see family. And, you know, my, my mum lives really near to us, so we were able to still keep our sort of thing oh, going. Good. But good. we only saw those people, you know, in England, it was very strict. So um, yeah, it was definitely a rough time, and then for m music was weird as well. It I mean, was weird. Yeah, I, I was able to record, and you know, I ended up writing a song with an artist that I can't tell you about. But I ended up writing this song with him. Come on, Corinne. On a Zoom, <laughs> I thought we were having a meeting to talk about songwriting. You know, like this is the style I use. I use this style, uh -huh. and he just it just kind of developed and you because there's this terrible time lag right, on Zoom, right. right so you think it, would be it is kind of bad for songwriting but right. um, we managed to a do hint? something uh, well I, I think it's someone really great and someone who's who's done really well recently so okay. I was very pleased to get this invitation <laughs> I was very pleased um but yeah I think I didn't realize how much I would miss mm. and did miss performing I think um we had just come off a tour yeah so when it first started I was like this will be kind of a nice bit of space. I can take time away. I've just had a baby and I get to sort of be with my family without right. throwing the towel in. You right, know, you right. Know, you've, so there was that and then it just kept going and going and going. Mm. And obviously the this, this serious, this serious health things, you know, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. just that side of it, the worry side of it. It's really nice to be back. And I mean, this the atmosphere here of just... It's a family reunion. It is a family. It's that's a how family I've described reunion. it to people. It's like being on a family reunion. You feel like everyone knows each other. And um, especially as an English person, just being around sort of so much mm -hmm. kind of black American culture, it's very specific, especially yeah. in this, like, we're in a particular generation here, yeah. right? You know, yeah. so it's like people are here, they want to relax. People, that's right. people will shout across, like, from <laughs> one side of the room to the other. <laughs> They're like, if like either they haven't seen each other for ages or it's just like a total strange but people engage people are mm -hmm. playful you know i've been in lifts where like someone's hair swung into someone else's <laughs> face and it looks like it's all tense for a few seconds and then they end up just Talking, leaving as friends laughing, and laughing right, everyone's right. a comedian yeah. like, <laughs> it's just really special oh, it's really special it. and i said to someone this is my first cruise they're like oh this is a good one to be on you know? oh absolutely it's not going to look the same any, any yeah, anywhere else yeah. it's not going to look the same yeah. this is very very specific yeah. so i want to talk about right right here right now yeah stony Stony Island Arts Bank. Stony Island Arts Bank. I started talking in my question and uh, a question and answer yesterday, and mm -hmm. I thought oh, I'm talking really ahead of this project. But yeah, I have a record coming out in September, mm -hmm. and it's called Black Rainbows. Yes. And uh, it's my response to this building in Chicago, which mm -hmm. is on Stony Island Arts Bank. It's an old Gothic bank that's 100 years old, and uh, it no longer as a functions as a bank. It was saved from demolition by the visual artist, the Astergates. And it contains all of the books that were ever submitted to Jet and Ebony magazine, Negro Digest. Wow. So all of the Johnson family, um, right. all of the Johnson family library. Collectibles, right, yeah. yeah. So everything that John Johnson and the whole family collected wow. is in there, along with so many of the, the artifacts from the Johnson building. You know, when wow. they were multi-millionaires, you know, the... Yeah. the the magazine went far and wide. They sent out all these subscriptions right. and they invested in black art. You know, he would go to other banks and see Monet's and Picasso's. And he said, I want to have black artists yes. on my walls. So there's so much wow. like um, there's so many paintings, there's so many sculptures. There's a uh, work from West Africa. It's all just around in this building and the building's part of the community. The community helped to run it. Yeah. Um, and there are events there. There are a collection of sort of problematic objects from America's past. Is it open to the public? It's open to the public. Oh, wow. There's all sorts of things happening there. I've seen prayer meetings. I've seen dance parties. I've seen DJs come in. Nice. I've seen talks. The downstairs is a gallery that mm -hmm. shows um, really great artists, up-and-coming artists and well-established artists that are right. putting their work there for a moment. So I was just really inspired by this building. And Theaster said, oh, you have to come and do a show. I remember when I left, I felt like these objects I'd seen right. were kind of speaking to me and telling Ooh. me their stories. So right. the record is really their stories, right. you know, how I felt holding these things and the history they carried. I, I, I don't see the connection. How did you end up on Stony Isles? 
I was playing in Chicago, and I guess I, I think I'd seen a photograph of Fiesta Gates mm-hmm. on um, Jamala Johns's Pinterest. Mm-hmm. I had a very mm-hmm. big Pinterest addiction at one point. <laughs> I, say, I think we all did. I'm free of that now. <laughs> but yeah, at one point I'd be sort of on my laptop, like three in the morning, pinning all these beautiful photographs mm-hmm. of of houses and bedrooms sitting in my own bedroom with like right. towels on the floor you know to like <laughs> clothes right. here you know just like plates of food and i thought i really need to spend some time in my real world mm-hmm. making my real world more beautiful instead of kind of curating this fantasy world so right right but yeah that was a moment but in this time i i uh, discovered this brilliant photographer called jamala johns mm. she runs la coil it's like beautiful black uh, hair and Mm-hmm. And she had this photo of Fiesta, and he was just, he seemed really interesting to me, and he had all this contemporary art in the background, right. which is still really new to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So he was staring at this photograph, and it was a picture of, it was a sculpture of like a goat on these legs, thin spindly legs mm-hmm. on the back of a train. Mm-hmm. And then there was a, um, a big neon sign for Harold's Chicken with a man chasing a chicken with a meat cleaver. I've got to see this. It's his artwork, so yeah. he's, and he's just staring at the photograph being like, yeah, this is my art. Like, right. You know, just, and he's this, you know, his black man, like not far from my age, and I just thought, I want to know more about this guy. Uh-huh. And then when I f- read about him, I found out that he had this art building, this bank in mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I went through that door, I just fell in love with the, wow. with the space. Wow. And I wanted to see more and know more and oh, I'm get sure. involved. I'm sure. Is there any one piece of artifacts that she can share with us that gave you that just gave you an impact that just moved you in a way? I mean, there are some songs, some lullabies from um, mm. you know enslavement times that talk about the women who would leave their own children at home to go and That's look right. after children, you know, the the f- um, children from the house, you know. Mm-hmm. And those kind of things really spoke to me, you know, I mm. think s- especially since I've had children. Yeah. So f- what is the effect of um, parents not being able to mother and father their own children? How does that work for generations? I end up writing this song that that is about ancestors and really about time. You know, I feel this connection to the people who've gone before. As you should. Yeah, but As I also feel should. like somehow what we can do in this moment can affect them or somehow they knew that we would be Mm, here and that gave them some sort of salve for where they were so this there is this this song is called a spell a prayer and it is about that sort of movement backwards and forwards in time between the generations and how we they're so full of joy at where we are Black Rainbow. I cannot wait. I can't wait to put it out. <laughs> oh, I cannot yeah. wait to hear it and experience it. Because if it is, if it is anything that you're telling me, inspired by, I'm ready. I'm ready Thank for you. it. I'm so ready for it. How do people keep in contact with you, Corinne? I have Instagram. So I mean, I don't know what all my handles are, but I have a Facebook. <laughs> I have an Instagram. I have a website. I guess it's like CorinneBellyRay.com. Right. And then um, I have such a long name, you know, it never fits in those. But I think, yeah, something along the lines of Corinne Bailey Ray. You know, I do do my own Instagram, so when I'm busy, it's fun. I want to put up a bunch of photos from the cruise. Oh, yeah. People just won't believe it. I saw a turtle off board you saw a the turtle? other day. Yeah, I mean, it must have been this big because I was on deck 11 or something, yeah. and I um, don't have very good sight. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like I, but I didn't need my glasses on. It was just this huge green turtle. It was when we were. I never see when we were still, and it just kind of. It was alongside the boat, oh. and then it just went down. And I don't know what the symbolism of it, but I was just so, just thought, I've seen it with my own eyes, you know, not I in a nature show. I never see turtles. Turtle. I was just telling a friend of mine, I have not seen a shark. I'm yes. not seeing it. I'm Any like, where? Fish. I need yeah, a fish. Yeah. I need <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. You need to get a very long line, <laughs> line or, something. or something of that but sort. But yeah, I've never had the experience of being able to see sea in all directions right. and you right. do you do sort of feel really connected with everyone it's a bit like being in space i exactly. imagine exactly like i it's can just imagine us. That. it reminds yeah. us that that's what the planet is right it's just us floating yeah. in space so this is like a mini planet for the next few days that's right that's yeah. right well we're glad that you're on our mini planet <laughs> <laughs> Corinne Bailey Ray, Thank it's you. always an honor. Thank it's you. always an honor to see you. This is Corinne Bailey Ray. I'm your host, Chodine Dorsey, and you're tuned in to Capital Jazz TV.